Hey, it's Rob, and welcome to Axel's Garage. We are out here with the Big Dummies K5, or V10, however technical you want to get. But if you remember, we've done a series of videos on a crank no-start issue that he had. Narrowed it down to the fuel pump, and we replaced the pump and found that, that the ground on the original pump had been, or the original, the, the ground on the pump that was in here had been messed with. Almost like they were having an issue, previous owner having an issue, added a second ground because they thought the ground was the issue, was losing ground. Um, definitely something funny going on. We, we fixed the ground and the problem went away temporarily and then still came back where it was a crank nose start and narrowed it down to the fuel pump. We put a fuel pump in it, we did a video on that, we did a whole series on it, and after the fuel pump, he had some stalling issues where he was stalling. So we traced it back to a wire bundle, if you remember, that was, um, the loom had busted open, it was laying across the heater hose pipe, um, possibly shorting something out there, so we, we fixed any broken wires in there, taped up any wires where the insulation was chafed away, and button that up nice and the stalling didn't completely go away every once in a while it would still stall so we looked into it a little bit further and a lot of you guys commented when we were having the fuel pump issues to check the oil pressure sending switch because the fuel pump is wired through there somehow in the circuit and I tried to look up wiring diagrams online and without access to real good ones that you have to pay for um, we couldn't find an 80, this is an 89. We couldn't find the 89 diagram, so we had to do our best guessing off of some earlier ones. So we tried to find a TBI vehicle similar to this and look at their schematic to see what it was. And we really couldn't, I couldn't isolate it down. And I'm not 100% sure still how that circuit works, but I do know the fuel pump is wired through the oil pressure switch. It's a three wire switch. So we went to disconnect the oil pressure switch and that oil pressure sending switch just fell apart in our hands. So we disconnected the wires and since we disconnected the wires on that switch, guess what? No more stalling. Well, I shouldn't say no more stalling. I've driven it a bunch. Uh, the little big dummy drove it a little bit and he said that it stalled on him once or twice. But I think his stall is the same thing that happened to me. I had one stall and it wasn't really a stall. It was right after startup put it in gear and it stalled and then it started right back up you know once it ran for a couple seconds if you let it run for a couple seconds it never really stalls so I don't think that that type of stall that I started it up cold dropped it in gear and it stalled even though it shouldn't I don't think that has anything to do with this problem so I think by disconnecting that oil pressure sending switch we kind of took that circuit out of the out of the loop so to speak and although his gauge doesn't work because we disconnected the switch he hasn't had the same stalling issue while he's driving it just shuts down um, and he hasn't had any kind of uh, crank no start issue uh, the only thing we have had is not using this vehicle long enough and now we got to bang a battery in because the battery uh, took a dump we tried charging it um, it was actually a fairly new interstate battery that didn't seem to last too long so we, we brought it back and got a warranty on it and we're going to throw the new battery in today so we got our new interstate battery in. Get the little hole down in place. I'm using a 13 millimeter on the hole down but It might be a half inch. I sort of somehow remember in my 90 that I had bought new that it was a 13 millimeter. That's why I grabbed a 13 millimeter. Now when I did take it apart, I noticed on my positive terminal I had some green crusties that you could see here. So what I'm going to do is just take a wire brush and clean that up as best as possible. I'm actually going to go get a little screwdriver and pick it out. It looks like there's a bunch of, let's see if I can get it on camera here, a bunch of real thick corrosion. Let me clean that up so we have good contact there. It's like some thick corrosion there. It's like, like nails on a chalkboard, I know. That's some, some heavy stuff on there. Let's see. That's a hell of a lot better. 
take some electrical contact cleaner. Get some in there. I know that metal scraping sound was probably horrible. Maybe my editor will edit that out of the video and put some uh, music in the background. No, I'm the editor. I'm, and if I had to deal with it, you're going to deal with it. All right, so. Now that that's nice and clean. This is the universal side post battery tool. Positive is nice and tight. Take your negative cap off. Go with our negative cap. And let's see if our negative terminal. Oh, a little green and crusty as well. Alright, you can see that there. A little bit of green and crusty in there. We're going to do the same thing going with the pick. Spray that out. That looks good. Alright, now of course this side doesn't have a 516 so it's got a bolt going through it and that's fine it works I actually like it better with a, a 3 8 bolt going through it because gives you something to put the uh, battery charger on or jumper cables on if you put a bolt in with a nut on it like like it is here um, I just I just like it better stupid side post batteries all right I think we're all set let me move my tools we got our new battery I am going to try to be organized and I am gonna write my battery down in my notebook with the mileage and the date because um, I'm trying to turn over a new leaf and be proactive about uh, keeping track of the parts I put on all the vehicles. So I am going to uh, turn the ignition on, listen for that fuel pump and, uh, and hopefully this thing fires. It's been sitting a little while. with that it's amazing what a battery what proper voltage will do so that's gonna be the end of our crank nose start um, fuel pump definitely when we took it out I mean we know that it was losing ground somewhere along its history we know that when we took that pump out I showed you how the terminals were burnt up on the pump so the pump was either bad or it needed to be replaced anyway. That oil pressure sending switch could have been a problem. It could have been the problem that made the pump burn up or made that, that ground, losing the ground on the pump. I don't know if the ground is wired through the switch or just the power, but that switch um, not making a good connection to send the, the power down in however the circuit is wired, like I said, I really couldn't figure it out, could have led to pump failure also. So it could have been a number of things compounding each other, which makes the pump go bad. Um, I'm pretty certain that, that it needed to pump one way or the other, and it needed that switch. We'll replace that switch eventually. We'll do that in a separate video, just isolating on, on replacing an oil pressure setting switch. But as far as our crank nose start, we are fixed. Um, the battery really wasn't a, a player in this, except that the vehicle sat for a long time while we were doing a lot of stuff, and, and the battery just couldn't put up with... Uh, 
with being drained down. I guess, it, you know, we, we drained it dead, dead, probably one too many times. Luckily, we, we were still within warranty on the interstate battery, and we're back on the road. The big dummy's coming home from Virginia in, in, a, in a short bit, maybe a week or two, I think, and he'll probably want to be driving this, and I want to make sure it's it's up and running for him. That's it today from Axel's Garage. Hope you enjoyed the series of our crank no start in this K5 or V10. Uh, it's an 89 Chevy Blazer TBI. It's the full size. We love it. We love these squares in uh, over here at Access Garage. And everything we use, we'll always link in the comments or in the description. You go in the comments and you tell me what your issues are with some of these TBI engines. Because I know there, there's lots of them. And we got a couple more videos coming up because we do have a couple of other gremlins we need to work out. Thanks for watching.